Recently, I did a short on decoupage paper that I picked up and I found a beautiful frame that I wanted to use, but I wasn't sure which paper I wanted. So I asked you guys which one would look best in this frame. They both look good, but there was one overwhelming one. Welcome to Purpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Let's get started. So I have this painter board. I don't even know what it is. It's just, it's a print that came uh, on in a, another frame that I had and it fit pretty well. I had to cut it down a little bit, but uh, it's, I decided I was going to use the other side of it to add my decoupage paper. So I took my Dixie Belle paint it's in the color latte and decided to paint the whole back side of the board this color. I just did one coat because the paper will cover most of it. So now we're going to find out what paper I used. Here it is. This is pretty much the overwhelming winner of the two papers. They were both beautiful, but this one just looked the best in the frame and most of you agreed. So I am going to add this to the board. So I got some water. I've had a few people tell me that I should use water when I do decoupaging. So I'm gonna try it with this one because it's such a big piece, I thought it might help me uh, get the paper on there. So the paint is dry underneath and now I'm going to take my Mod Podge and do a light coat all the way to all of the edges on this board. As I work my way down, I'm going to just give some sprays on the paper to wet it just a little bit with some water. This is supposed to help it with bubbles and uh, wrinkles and things like that. It's supposed to help it get those out a little bit better. So I'm just gonna do this in sections. I do the top part to see how well it works and it worked very well. And then I'm going to move down to the middle section and work on that next. pulled out a plastic baggie and put that on my hand to help me smooth out any of the bubbles and wrinkles. It seems to make it easier to do so without working the paper too much and getting any rips on it. Once the paper's dry, I trim the edges all the way around and then I give it a coat of Mod Podge on the top to seal it in, make it easier to wipe down and just make sure that it doesn't lift from the board that it is attached to. Once the Mod Podge was dry, I placed the picture into the picture frame and this project is finished.
found this out thrifting. I have never found, I don't believe, a chicken this big uh, out in the wild. And I was so excited to find it. So I'm bringing it home and it was this brownish color. I'm going to give it an under coat of the flat black spray paint and then I'll be painting over the top of it but I want to make sure that I have this paint on there to distress back to. So once this guy is dry I'm going to give him a two coats actually of the Dixie Bell Latte paint over the whole piece. Uh, I'm going to distress him back to the black paint, but I want this to be the top coat. So instead of brushing it on, I'm just dabbing it and giving it a little bit of texture. So here you can see I'm just pouncing my brush onto the rooster. There you go, you can see the texture on there. And I do that all over and it's two coats just like that. So he's nice and covered. Now I'm gonna take some light sandpaper and go over the ridges of like his wings and his feathers over his tail uh, and anywhere that is raised up a little bit. So this is bringing back the original color, which is fine. I liked the color. It was just too much uh, of a weird brown color, but just a little bit peeking through along with that black. So he looks like he's been painted a few different times, which he has and it just brings that back and adds some dimension some texture and it just gives him a little bit of character and i just think he's adorable I picked up this basket for free and wanted to give it a makeover. So uh, it had some faded and just some discoloration on it. So I thought it could use uh, some of my dark stain wax mixture that I make. I just create this with some Waverly antique wax, about eight ounces, and I put it in a separate jar. And then I add eight ounces of water and about two tablespoons of black paint. I use I use Waverly ink paint, but you could use probably whatever you wanted. I mix it really well, and every time I go to use it, I mix it up and or give it a little shake because this is in like a pickle or relish jar with a nice lid, make sure it's closed. And then I just paint it on just like I would anything else and then wipe it back. And that dark stain just sits down in to all those uh, basket pieces there, and it just makes it look so uh, aged and distressed. I just love how these tr this transforms these baskets. So I went all the way around inside and out, added the stain, and then I pulled it back with a rag and it just gave it such a nice look. Once it was dry, I decided that I wanted to also add a little black rim around the top and the handles. So I just took some of my Waverly ink paint and just did a light brush of the black all the way around so it was a more of a a solid color i'm going to be putting a, something on the front so i just thought it would break it up just a little bit and just add just give it another look to it that that would make it look really nice and just different from other baskets so i just did one coat all the way around on that until I made it all the way around inside and out. Hey guys, so before I finish up this basket, I wanted to show you in the next clip, I'm gonna show you my new stencil that I have out. I created a new stencil that I think you're gonna love and the crow stencil went over so well that I thought I would uh, go ahead and create a new one because I just don't see anything that I want to use 
uh, out in just shopping. So I'm just, I thought, well, I'll just create one that I want. So this one is the Bittersweet Prim stencil that I created. It's a little bit big, I need to cut it down. But uh, it has the flower arrangement on the side. It says Bittersweet Prim and it has a jug here. So there's many options. Now in this next clip, I'm gonna show you just a small portion of using the writing and some of the vine flowers here. But in future videos, probably the next video that I have, I just ran out of time on doing some more projects with my stencil to show you how I wanna use it. So uh, I just, I couldn't find anything with a jug that I liked, so I just, found this one and decided to add this to this. So there's just so many options on how to use this. Uh, the jug with some of the uh, flowers and vine coming out a little bit down on the bottom. You could just have it like that or you could take the bittersweet prim and you could put it across the front of the jug. Uh, you could just do prim, you could just do bittersweet. You could, um, just do like I'm doing in this one, just do the writing and some of the vine. The only thing that I caution if it's something that you purchase is when you wash it, be very careful because this is very delicate as far as the little flowers when they laser cut these, it's very intricate. And so when I go to, when I went to wash my, the one that I have, um, I, it, it just, you know, it wants to catch on anything that you use to wash it with. So just be very careful. Uh, it's just very delicate as far as the flowers go. Everything else is pretty good. And in the next clip, I'm gonna show you how I use a little bit of this. And then hopefully next video that I put out, I will have many more different options on how to use this with different colors, different variations. So if you're interested in this stencil, just look down in the Shopify shop down at the bottom of this video, you'll see a list of all different kinds of things for sale. And also there'll be a link in my description for my Etsy shop. And I'll try to remember to link it on the comments and pin it to the top. So it'll be in the comments as well at the very top. So you just click on my Shopify uh, at the bottom or you can click on the Etsy link and you can go there and purchase it in either place. So let me know what you think if you do get it. Send me some uh, Instagram messages with how you use it and what your plans are. I'm very excited to see people using this and how they're going to create with it. I hope you like it. Anyway, so let's get on and I'll show you how I finish the basket. So I cut a piece of burlap fabric out so that I can put fit that on the front of the basket. I have my new stencil here. You can find that down in the description and the link to my Etsy store and my Shopify uh, both down below. So I, uh, we're, I'm just gonna use the Bittersweet Prim and a little bit of the little vine going up the side today. And then in a future video, I will show you how I uh, use this in several different ways. There's so many different variations that you can do. So I'm just trimming that down so it'll fit a little bit nicer. And then of course, I'm going to pull some of the burlap pieces off to fray the edges and give them a little bit of a distressed frayed look. So then I'm going to um, trim it down even more. I didn't do all the way, so I'm just measuring it out so that I can make sure that it's going to fit all the way. And then I'm gonna use my black ink and that is what I'm going to use to do my lettering. And I just dab that on to each of my uh, words that I have on there. So this, uh, because it's uh, fabric and it's very, uh, it just soaks up that paint. I do, I go pretty thick with it. And then later on, I go back and distress it a little bit and I'll show you how I do that. Uh, because these, this is a stencil, the letters can't be uh, completely cut out. So you have to go back in, if you want, you don't have to, uh, go back in and fill in your little letters. They have little lines on them where that's connected to your stencil. So I just go back in with a smaller little brush and a little bit of black paint and fill in those little lines so the, the writing looks like it's all one piece. 
So I think that looks so much better. And then I'm going to take a little piece of the vine and go up from the one side of the prim and I'll add my black paint so that I can have a little bit of a vine there. And then I give my stencil a wash and I'm gonna flip it over because uh, you can use this two-sided as far as this, the vine goes. You can flip it over and have the vine going the other way. So that's what I did with that. Now I didn't want it to be so stark black, so I decided to take a little bit of sandpaper and see if I could sand my lettering down and my vines a little bit, and it actually worked. It did kind of spread the black paint around just a little bit, but that's okay, this is a prim piece, and if I could have distressed it a little more, it would have been uh, fine with that. So uh, I didn't mind having that, the lettering have a little bit of dark paint around the outside. It's kind of a halo effect, I guess you'd call it. So I'm just adding some hot glue and I'm going to add this to the side of the basket, smooth it out. And then uh, I'm going to kind of fluff up the edges where it's frayed so that it just looks a little more distressed and, and, uh, like it's been around for a while and this is finished. I hope you like my projects today. Let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite if you have one. Don't forget to check out my new stencil, Bittersweet Prim. I am so excited about using this and it's a great time of year to do a bunch of fall stuff with it. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and don't forget subscribe if you haven't already and have a great day.